Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this painting tutorial will demonstrate how to paint a snowman on the beach. I did this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and the first thing that I am going to do is use a 3 quarter inch flat wash brush to paint the sky. I have a palette with primary blue and titanium white and I'm going to load my brush in the water and I'm going to load the brush with the two colors primary blue and titanium white so about equal amounts mixed on my palette to make a lighter blue color. I'm going to start at the top of the canvas and I'm going to take this color and apply it to the top of the canvas. So this is the sky in the painting and this sky is actually going to start out slightly darker and get a little bit lighter as it goes towards the middle of the painting. So the horizon line is about at the middle of the painting. Now we can do left and right horizontal strokes all throughout or we can kind of change the direction of the strokes to make them kind of go in uh, different angles instead of all horizontal. So that's up to you if you want to stay horizontal or if you want to kind of um, create some texture in your sky. So um, I have dipped my brush in a little bit of water to kind of get the paint to flow a little bit better in there but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to this painting. I'm going to start angling my strokes to kind of go in different directions. So I call these X style strokes. Um, you're basically just flip flopping your brush and kind of blending the colors on the canvas. So it kind of creates some texture in the sky. Maybe there's some high clouds in the sky and it's not exactly a pure blue sky, um, but it also helps um, when we have these kind of strokes. And then when we do the water, it'll make the water stand out. Um, the ocean water will stand out because the ocean water will be all horizontal strokes, but the sky will be um, a different kind of stroke. So the idea is to kind of have our blue be a little bit darker at the top and then sort of blend to a lighter blue as we approach the middle of the canvas. So I'm just filling up this area with that primary blue and white combination. And then as I kind of work my way down the canvas, I'm going to slightly add in some more white in there and blend it back up so that my sky gets gradually lighter as I work my way down. So I'm still flip flopping my brush and kind of blending the two colors together, the blue and the white. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you have blotches of blue that look darker or blotches of white in there that don't blend all the way, that's okay. Um, try not to get too critical of your sky because there's going to be a whole bunch of other things in this painting that are going to be the main focus. So keep filling up your canvas with the blue and white combination. Keep flip flopping that brush to create that texture in the sky with different angles and try to make a little bit more light on the bottom. Um, added, I added a little bit more blue up there, but as you can see, my paint's already starting to dry. So it's going to be kind of hard to blend it once that paint up there has already dried. So uh, work your way down um, to about the center part of the canvas and then press pause if you need to. This part is going a little bit fast. And so I'm just mixing that color on my palette right there. I grabbed a little bit of that white, kind of blended it with the blue. And I know that down here I want my blue to be lighter. So I'm just going to make sure I grab more white on my brush or grab more white and blend it into the blue to make that blue lighter on my palette and just kind of smooth out my strokes and blend it back up into the rest of the sky. I did not mark my horizon line in this painting. I could have and you can too. You can measure the halfway point. You could get a piece of masking tape and apply that there so you know where that halfway point is or you can get a ruler and draw it in but I just kind of estimated it and actually I ended up going a little bit too far but that's okay. We can always paint over it and um, this is 
all about having fun and not worrying about mis making mistakes or anything like that. So I'm just kind of blending that lighter area that's kind of touching that darker area up there and grabbing that little bit of extra white kind of towards the bottom to make it look a little bit lighter down there. And I know I went way past the halfway point, but that's okay. Um, I'm working on a panel, so if you're working on like a stretched canvas that has the sides, then you can extend that blue over on the sides of your canvas. But what we're going to do next is we're actually going to define our horizon line and I highly recommend that you get a straight edge ruler for this. You can estimate it, but it's a lot kind of easier if you have something to go off of. So I grabbed a ruler where I can see the numbers because I can't see the numbers anymore on my um, T-square ruler. So I measured at seven inches because the painting canvas is 14 inches high. And so the middle point would be at seven inches. And then I'm just gonna take my T-square and line it up with the canvas and just kind of take the tip of my brush and gently paint in that line. So now I have um, the mark of where my horizon line is. And so we're gonna do the ocean water and the ocean water is going to start out light and get slightly darker as it goes down. So it's opposite the sky. So it starts out light and gets dark as we go down versus the sky started out dark and got lighter as it goes down. Um, but also we're gonna change the direction of the strokes. We're gonna have our strokes go horizontal this time instead of textured. And that's gonna um, kind of create the illusion that the there's ocean right there. And it's the same kind of blue, but we're making the direction of the strokes different. So it'll make it look like water. So I'm grabbing a little bit more of that blue and I'm just kind of blending it down. Um, like I said, our water is going to gradually get darker as we go down, which means I'm just going to keep um, adding a little bit more primary blue to my brush as I work my way down. And If you feel like your paint is kind of drying too fast, you can grab a bit of water right there on the tip and kind of distribute it with the paint on your palette. That'll give it a little bit of a boost so that the flow will continue and not be so dry. Also, if you feel like your brush is just getting overloaded with paint, you can have a rag on hand and kind of wipe your brush and um, kind of, if the color is not doing what you want it to do, wiping it off kind of helps restart it and get it going again with the color that you're trying to create. Um, but I'm just kind of gently blending this water in. I'm, I don't want to over blend it because I like the streaks in there. The few streaks of the darker blue and the few streaks of the white really gives it that water texture. We'll go in and paint some water lines later, but um, just having those natural streaks in there makes it look really nice. And this ocean is kind of in the distance. Um, there's going to be that sandy island on the bottom. So it, we're not going to do too many wave details either. And I just grabbed a little bit more of that primary blue. So um, I'm in the area down here where I'm kind of closer to the bottom of my canvas. And this is going to be a lot of um, primary blues. There's not a whole lot of white down here. It's more of a pure primary blue and of course I, I want to blend it back up into that lighter blue so that it has a smooth blend in there and it's not so choppy. Uh, but right here where the transition zone is I'm just kind of brushing over it, working my paint to get it to blend and making sure that the bottom area has mostly that primary blue. And let's see, it's probably about a two to three inch gap on the bottom. I'd say more like two inches from the bottom. So don't paint all the way down because we, we have that sandy area. Um, if you want to paint all the way down, you can, but we really want to leave that gap in there for the sand. And then grabbing just a teeny bit of white right there on the tip of my brush and using the brush kind of um, just using the tip and not the full bristles. That'll create a few water lines in there. So those thin sort of white lines that kind of appeared right there, 
that's just by using that the very tip of my brush with a little bit of white and if you want to see more of the white sort of um, streaks in the water for maybe some waves way in the distance you can um, add some more white to your palette and get it right there on the tip of the brush and then gently blend it in there uh, this works when that blue is still wet um, if that blue was dried it that white would kind of take over but because that blue is still wet it's still able to kind of blend in and look more softer and subtle and I'm just adding a few streaks way in the distance but like I said we'll do some more water texture later on but for now I want to just go ahead and wipe this brush off because it got overloaded there I want to define this horizon line a little bit better so I grabbed a little bit more white on the tip of my brush and I'm just taking it and applying it right there along the horizon line so that horizon line is a little bit brighter but we really see the difference between the sky and where the ocean is okay so what we're going to do next or what i'm going to do next is i'm going to dry this painting especially down on the bottom because we are going to paint the sand and the sand cannot be painted until all that blue is dried on the bottom for the sand color, I used unbleached titanium. So go ahead and load your palette with that color. And you'll want to make sure your three quarter inch wash brush is all cleaned off and dried and ready to go. So no more blue on that brush. Grab the unbleached titanium. And so we're just going to kind of create an area of sand. And over on the left, it's going to overlap some of that blue that's been painted in um, so probably about four inches on the left it's going to dip down and um, end up at about three or four inches again on the right so you just kind of estimate um, this is just the sand area so if you want more of a sand area you can paint it higher if you want less you can paint it lower but this is where our palm tree is going to be situated on as well as our sand snowman and so I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to kind of really define that line and paint it in so unbleached titanium is a very opaque color so it won't need multiple coats to cover all that blue um, you should be able to get it in um, maybe one or two coats for the coverage and just fill that whole area in solid. We're going to go ahead and rinse that three quarter and set it to the side and grab a new brush. This is a number eight round brush and I'm going to load my palette with burnt umber. I'm going to demonstrate how to paint this palm tree starting with the trunk of the tree and then we'll be doing the palms of the palm tree. So we're going to go ahead and grab the number eight and we're actually going to slightly water down this brown a little bit. So when I slightly water down a paint color, I just kind of grab um, some water in my brush. So dip my brush in the water and then the water that's on the bristles, I just kind of distribute it into the paint. So that'll get the paint to flow a little bit better, especially with this burnt umber color it tends to um, not be a flowy color at first until we add a teeny bit of water to get it to boost a bit so I'm going to just kind of sketch out my tree truck now if you don't feel comfortable just sketching it out with the paintbrush uh, grab a piece of chalk and then kind of sketch it out with a piece of chalk but my palm tree starts out kind of wide on the bottom and then it go, it curves and kind of goes to a point. And then so the bottom is kind of curved and wider. And then once I'm kind of um, confident about the shape of the tree, I can go ahead and fill it in solid. And we're just filling the shape in solid with the brown. Thank you. 
on the base of the tree trunk, we have kind of this piled up of sand going on. So I'm going to grab some the sand color on the tip of my brush. So there's both brown and the sand color on my brush. And I'm just taking my, my round brush and kind of dotting the base of that tree trunk and kind of uh, uh, around it and kind of creating the impression that sand is kind of piled up around the base of the trunk. A little bit more interesting than just leaving it without anything else. And you can kind of get that sand and overlap a little bit of the, the base of the trunk too. And then, so there's still that unbleached titanium on my brush with the brown and I'm just going to kind of create a few sort of texture strokes on my palm tree trunk. I don't want to get too detailed here. I know I'm going to have Christmas lights on it and that's going to kind of steal the show here but I wanted to get something else more interesting to look at than just the solid brown. So I just took that that sand color and I'm just kind of painting these curved strokes along the trunk of the tree gives it a little bit of texture and just the curves all the way up and down and that's basically it for the trunk of the tree. I'll be demonstrating the palm leaves next and I'll be using a different brush for the palm leaves. I'll actually be using a 3 8 inch angle brush and I loaded my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. That's um, a dark green color. So this angle brush um, is actually really nice for painting palms um, because of the nature of it being an angle brush. So I'm going to load my um, brush in the green paint. And I'm going to paint the center line of my palm leaf first. So I just took the brush and um, when you use the angle brush, you want to make sure the top part of the angle is um, facing um, the opposite of the direction that you're painting in. So it's facing towards the left and I'm painting towards the right. And then I'm just going to do several different lines in there for the, the middle part of the palm leaves. And you can do as many as you want. I did five so far and I'm probably going to do six here, maybe seven. And then for the actual palm leaves, I still use that angle brush. Um, kind of the same stroke, only you're making smaller lines instead of that one big middle line. So I'm going to start at um, the tip of it and in the middle. And I'm going to stroke each little palm leaf line uh, downwards. So it's angling downwards. And I'm going to do it here on this side the opposite way. So it's just one quick stroke. Um, again, the angle is facing the opposite of the direction that I'm painting in. So let me demonstrate that on the back. So you have your middle line. You have your middle palm tree line. And you have your different leaves that are kind of hanging out. So it's one just kind of a quick stroke that kind of wisps away. So you I guess you put a little bit more pressure starting out and then you're releasing the pressure super fast and that it creates that palm leaf. So it's a little bit of practice. You can practice on the back of your canvas too until you kind of get the hang of it. If you are not a fan of the angle brush, I've been using the angle brush a lot lately. I'm becoming uh, more of a fan of it because it kind of creates some cool different techniques. But if you like to use the round brush better um, or a bright brush, a, a flat brush, um, you can certainly do that. You don't have to use the angle brush for this if it's not your uh, a brush that you like to use. So um, what I did here was I actually decided to make my green look a little different for this one. I mixed a little bit of white into it. And that little bit of white will 
create some color variation in your green so it's not just all one solid green all throughout it's a green that has different tints to it so maybe the light is hitting the leaf differently so it looks lighter in some areas and it's just more interesting to look at a little bit more realistic even though we're not going for the realism look um, so you just grab the green and mix a little bit of white on your palette and that's how you create the different tints in there if you want to create um i guess you can go darker if you wanted to mix a little bit of brown into the green but i didn't want to venture off and i just decided to do the white and the green but you can do darker if you wanted to and i'm just going to continue to paint all of these leaves on the palm tree until it's all filled up There needed to be one more palm leaf up here so I painted that in. Um, you may have noticed that I a couple of the palm leaves I painted over a couple times and um, just did that to kind of make them fuller or stand out better. You don't have to paint over them multiple times but if you find that one looked kind of skimpy and, and, and needed more leaves on it you can go back over with a second coat. So the direction that the leaves are going kind of dependent on gravity for one. So if it's kind of up in the air, they might be hanging down. It could also be dependent on how the wind is blowing. So maybe the wind's blowing and the, the leaves are kind of blowing different ways. Um, so you can kind of think about that as you're painting your leaves. So this one down here, the leaves are kind of going downwards because of gravity. And then I just did the second coat on there just to kind of make it look more fuller. That's it for our palm tree. We're going to move on to the fun part that we're going to do the snowman. So for the sand snowman, I used unbleached titanium and titanium white, and I'll be using burnt umber in there as well. So on the palette, so this is the number eight round brush. So back to that round brush again. I'm going to mix probably about equal amounts of white with the sand color, the unbleached titanium. And uh, the reason why I mixed white into it is because it's going to need to stand out from the sand that's already right there on the shore. So it's a lighter color. I'm going to use my round brush to paint out the snowman. So your typical snowman shape with the larger circle on the bottom, a medium circle in the middle, and a smaller circle at top. And these circles also slightly overlap each other. So you want to make sure that there, that's happening there. And uh, before doing this, you may want to kind of draw it out with chalk first to get the placement of it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable just drawing it out with the paintbrush first. But the top of the snowman's head kind of got, um, it kind of reaches to the, the horizon line. So you can see how tall that is. So um, just a little bit under the horizon line actually. That's how tall that snowman is. And I'm just going to go ahead and use that color and fill it in solid. So that's that white mixed with the unbleached titanium. I'm just going to kind of fill that in solid and I'm not worrying about uh, blending or shadowing or anything like that yet. I just want to fill in my shape. Also make sure my snowman is not going crooked or anything like that. So when I do fill in these circles, I just want to make sure that I am painting in circular strokes and I'm not doing it horizontally or vertically or anything like that. So going in circle strokes, filling in your circles. So I'm going to show you how to do the shading next. 
you want to, on your palette, mix a darker sand color. And to do that, you want to take that unbleached titanium. So I still have the unbleached titanium and the white kind of combination because I didn't rinse my brush at all. And so you want to take that unbleached titanium color and grab a teeny bit of brown in there. You don't want it to get it too dark because too dark and we're going to have problems. But make it slightly darker, probably two to three shades darker than the actual unbleached titanium. And so you'll make a light brown color. Um, you can use light brown if you actually have light brown paint. But um, anyway, so we're going to start at the bottom of that circle. And I'm just going to paint in curved strokes. And I am going to kind of blend it up into the rest of the color. And to do that, it's wet on wet blending. So my sand color of the snowman is still wet and I'm able to blend it in there. To help blend it, you can grab more titanium or more unbleached titanium on your brush and that'll help you blend. So notice also that I'm starting at the bottom snowball and going up. That'll help it look more like that it's overlapping each other. Um, so make sure you start at the bottom of each of the circles and that you start on the actual bottom circle and then work your way towards the top circle. So each circle has that light brown on the very bottom of the circle and it's just blended up. So just on my palette, what I did real quick was I just grabbed a lighter color on my brush so that I can blend that sort of darker color on the bottom and just kind of blend it up. And then I can grab some even lighter um, tints in there so grabbing a little bit more white on my brush and adding that lighter color kind of on the side so you see how kind of added that lighter on the side and just kind of blended it into the rest and over here on the top just adding a little bit of pop of lighter color at the top and just kind of blending it back in and maybe over here on the side, a little bit of lighter color, blending it back in. Just as long as you keep the bottom circles kind of more shaded. And it'll make your sand snowman look more like it's three-dimensional. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off all the excess um, color on there. I'm going to mix a slightly darker brown in there. Not too dark, but a little bit darker than the actual shadow on the bottom of the snowman because I want to paint an actual shadow that's underneath the snowman. So I'm going to take that slightly darker brown and apply it just under the snowman. So I'm painting in sort of curved strokes right under the snowman and going pretty much to the bottom of the canvas. And right there, a little pop of darker brown in there. That maybe got too dark in there, but I can go back and kind of lighten it up a little bit. And then I want to uh, have this shadow kind of go extended across the bottom of the canvas. So I'm just going to paint very, very loosely left and right just on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that brush off and set it to the side. I'm going to use a smaller brush next. Actually, I'm going to grab my 3 8 angle brush. So back to the angle brush, uh, I'm going to do the sign next. So this is a vertical post sitting in the sand, and I'll be doing it with uh, burnt umber. So loading my brush with the burnt umber, and I'm just going to take that brush and paint a vertical line. And you know what? That's okay. If that line is not exactly vertical, it would fit the scene just well if it's kind of slanted over and that's okay. So I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker and that line goes pretty much all the way to the horizon line. That's how tall that line is because um, I want three signs on it. The signs are going to be visible and want to be able to read what I'm going to write on the sign. Um, so if you wanted your sign to be taller or even shorter, that could be up to you how you want to do it. Then I'm going to switch brushes here real quick to the round brush. So you can use any of your round brushes for this. This is the eight round, but I'm just taking that unbleached titanium and I'm doing the dot thing again. And that's going to be my little sand that's kind of piling up right there on the ground 
with the little dots. So next I'm going to show you how to paint the actual signs and they look like they may be tricky but actually they're not. Um, so I did this with the angle brush and you can do it with any of any brush you want but I'm going to kind of make a wood color. So I have the burnt umber and the unbleached titanium kind of double load. I mixed those two colors together about equal amounts but I didn't mix them all the way. So when I paint this stroke, I'm going to get a varied sort of wood color look. So you can see my brown and sand color. They're kind of um, not mixed all the way on the palette, but that's creating that sort of streaky look that I want to make with my wood sign. So I'm just going to take that angle brush and kind of define the shape of my sign. Um, this one, the sign is going at an angle on purpose and then I can define the shape of it by kind of painting that shape in and then painting that shape in solid, doing some streaks of white in there to kind of get it to get some color variation. And if I really wanted to, I can even grab some more white and um, purposely kind of make some st streaks of white in there to give that wood some character. And so for the second sign, I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. Load my brush in the, the brown and the unbleached titanium. Um, and this sign is actually going to go more horizontal. So I'm just kind of stroking that kind of left and right, stroking it. I don't want it to blend all the way together because I want it to look like wood. And then I'm kind of making the edges of this kind of frayed on the side on purpose. Like it's a piece of driftwood and it doesn't have a smooth edge to it. And then I can um, kind of define the shape of it using my brush. You're really just working that brown paint, um, getting it to form the shape of the sign that you want, kind of going over it a couple times and um, making sure that it's got some good coverage over the blue. For the most part, it's got some good coverage. Um, so right here at the top, I wanted to just add a little bit of a lighter stroke in there and just kind of blend that back in. Maybe it looks like a little bit of a highlight at the top. And there's going to be another sign in here. And just kind of figure out what angle you want it to go. This one I'm going to kind of have angled downwards. And then adding that darker color in there to create that wood grain look. And just kind of decide what kind of shape um, the sign is going to be. And filling it in, working that brown, getting it to to um, be blended but not blended all the way and defining the shape of my sign. So the signs actually a couple of them I turned into arrow shapes and I'll show you how I did that because I decided that um, maybe the signs would be pointing like a sign that's pointing in the direction. So if you wanted to do it that way you can leave it like this if you want but Wanted to give it a little bit more character. Um, the top parts, the little bit of a streak of white in there gives it more of a wood look. So if you want your sign with an arrow, you just kind of decide which side has the arrow. So you just take the brush and kind of define that point of the wood and just fill it in solid. This one down here ended up as an arrow, so I just did kind of a triangle thing and then filled it in solid. To paint the little nails on the pieces of wood, I just used the back of my paintbrush and stamped with the burnt umber, so one little dot where the nail of the sign would be. You can do two dots if you want, but I just did the one dot. 
Next, I am going to paint the sun of this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and set this brush to the side and grab my number eight round brush. And I'm going to load my palette with primary yellow. So you can use primary yellow or any kind of yellow. You can use cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, and some titanium white. So the white is going to allow my yellow to be nice and opaque and bright because yellow tends to be a super translucent color. So what I'm going to do, make sure that this part of my palette is dry so I don't end up with a green sun here. But I'm going to mix about equal amounts of white and yellow on my palette. So mix white and yellow to make a light yellow and go ahead and paint your sun, paint a circle, fill it in solid. And then what I decided to do is take my finger here. I'll do, I'll show you in a second, but I'm making my circle a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take my finger and actually smear the edges of it and it's going to create um, the look that the sun is kind of glowing outwards. So just on the edges of the circle, just kind of smear it out. And then what you can also do, um, let me fill in the center part with a little bit more brighter white because that'll make it look like the sun is super bright right there in the center. So just the more of the white and the yellow and I'm just taking my finger, kind of blending, um, smearing the outer edges a little bit. You can also do this dry brush style. If you don't like using your finger, you can get your brush and make sure it's super dry. And taking that dry brush and kind of um, smearing the, the edges of it to create sort of these radiating lines kind of going on the outer part. So if I just took my brush, I wiped it off and I'm um, just taking it and kind of smearing that sort of yellow color outwards to create um, the sort of glowing look of the sun. I'll be demonstrating the clouds next. So I used the angle brush for the clouds. So get that all rinsed off and dried and freshen up titanium white on your palette. So we're going to go ahead and load the angle brush in the white, but we're going to wipe it off with a towel. So I loaded it in the white and wiped it off with the towel. And I'm going to paint sort of the, the edges of the cloud first and then kind of fill it in. So this brush is super dry. There's not a lot of white, so I'm going to have to kind of work harder to even get that white to appear. But the dry brush style is going to create the effect of the cloud. So the top part of the cloud was super bright because that's where my initial stroke was and it just kind of ran even more dry after that. So you take your, your brush, it's dry, you add the top part of the cloud and then you just kind of um, dry brush the rest in and just kind of smear it all in with the dry brush. So again, you start at the top of the cloud to form the shape of your cloud. And then you fill the rest of the shape in with the, the brush. There's not a lot of paint on my brush, so it's super dry. We can see through that sky. And I'm just kind of dragging it outwards. Maybe this cloud is kind of um, floating in the wind, so it, it kind of has a trail on it. So load it in the white, wipe it off with the towel, um, paint the top part of the cloud where that's the bright part would be. That's where the sun is hitting the cloud. And then fill the rest of the shape in with your brush that's super dry and maybe a few streaks of um, horizontal lines because the wind is kind of blowing that cloud. But those are some really basic clouds for our um, ocean picture and we're not going to get into too many more details with that and we're just going to kind of go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So next I'm going to paint water lines in my ocean um, with the angle brush again. I'm just going to load it with the white. It's not dry brush style. This is full on adding paint to the brush without it being dry. But these water lines are super bright. I'm just painting little tiny horizontal lines, um, especially under the area where the sun would be. So that's where the sun would be reflecting a whole bunch of white lines. But uh, we would have these lines all over because there's light coming from all different places from the sun obviously but it's reflecting over all the water and just a few lines all over the water if you want you can have your lines be um, larger towards the bottom because it's closer in a uh, smaller way in the back but you don't really have to do that much because not much detail it's not really the focus of the painting so what we're going to do next is actually the fun part. We're going to go ahead and decorate our snowman. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you the arms of the snowman. So I'm switching to a number four round brush and I'll be using burnt umber, watering down the burnt umber just slightly. Again, grabbing that little bit of water on my brush and kind of distributing it into that brown and kind of twisting my brush right there to really get that right there on the point. But I'm gonna paint branches. So um, this is his arm. So you can do as many little pronged branches as you want on each side of the snowman. And then this arm is kind of going up because I didn't want it to overlap the sign. So it just happened to do go that way. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that and we'll be doing the Santa hat next. So get all that brown off of the brush and freshen up your titanium white if you need to. So I'm going to start with the bottom part of the hat and that bottom part is going to slightly overlap his head to make it look like it's on his head and it should be nice and bright and stand out against the sand color because there's no sand color in this white it's just pure white so this is the bottom part of his of the santa hat then i'm going to load my palette with cadmium red medium hue you can use any red that you have on hand. It doesn't have to be that exact shade of red. But then I'm gonna go ahead and load my brush in that red. And I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out the Santa hat. So it's kind of triangular. And then I want it to kind of go down over to the right. So I'm gonna kind of make it go triangular and then get the point part to kind of dip down. And then I'll go ahead and fill that in solid red. I'm gonna let that red dry all the way first before doing the little white circle on the tip of the hat so that white doesn't mix with the red. But this next part is super fun. I'm gonna mix some Hawaiian lei colors for the flowers, for the, the flowers in the lei on my palette, starting with the pink. So it's not actually gonna be um, it's going to be a really warm pink. So mixing the red with the white to create a lighter red color and you, on my palette, then I'll just kind of paint these little tiny sort of wobbly circle shapes to form his necklace, his lay necklace. Then rinse and dry your brush and grab the next color. So this is yellow and I'm just painting the little yellow flowers. So just little wobbly dots and then an orange color. So to make the orange on your palette, um, you mix the red and the yellow together, but make sure to only have just a teeny bit of red in there because the, the red's a little bit is strong. So more yellow than red if you're making orange. And just painting little more, um, some more little dots in there for the, the lay. And then um, if you want some more little pops of red in there, you can. If you wanted to do blue in there, you can, or or other colors I just I kept with the warm colors and then I'm gonna go ahead and on my palette make an orange so this is gonna be um, the orange for his nose I already kind of made the orange on there but I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow in there and a pop of white 
um, uh, just be careful with red. So if you do too much red, it's going to look too red. Um, so, uh, but also that little pop of white will help be it help make it be nice and opaque. So I'm just going to take that orange color and paint his nose. So do a triangle shape for his carrot nose. It might need two coats in there, especially that part that goes over the blue. You'll need Mars Black next for the sunglasses and the mouth and the coal buttons. And so using that number four round brush, nice and rinsed off, uh, apply that black to your brush. So with the sunglasses, I just kind of kept it simple. Just kind of take your brush and sort of sketch out um, the shades and do the little um, sunglass um holders and then the little piece in the middle and then uh, this part is going behind the carrot so we wouldn't really see the full ones but your carrot might be at a different angle so you may see the full set of sunglasses and I'm just doing the the other piece so just keep it simple but um, the sunglasses look really adorable on this snowman so I had to do sunglasses and when that black dries we'll do little white lines to for the glare of the glasses and I'm just going to take that black and go ahead and paint his mouth so his mouth has the cold buttons so we'll, we'll give him a smile and then um do his buttons as well with the black. And then really quick, now that I have this black on my palette, I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint a darker line on the bottom of these signs. It'll just give the sign a little bit of dimension. Just the line right there on the bottom of the, the bottom edges of each of the signs using the four round brush, just black right there on the tip of my brush. Then I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off and I'm going to do that little white piece on the tip of his Santa hat now that I, um, the red part of his hat is dry. So grabbing a little bit of white and doing a circle right there on the tip of his Santa hat. I'm going to take that white and add a little bit of highlight on the right part of the post and a little bit on the top of the signs as well. Next, I'm gonna show you the Christmas lights on the palm tree, so this is super fun. I took my number four round brush, and if you have, if your four round is not the same as mine and it's like thicker, try to find a really, really thin brush for this, because this is a thin line, and so I'm painting this thin line that's wrapped around the tree. It's, it's black paint, so I gotta make sure I pick up my paint brush for the parts that are um, going behind the palm tree. So you're doing a, a wavy line, but you're picking up your brush where the, the actual trunk of the tree is. And I did not do lines, um, Christmas lines on the palm tree leaves. Um, it, I, it thought, I thought it would look a little bit too busy for that, but I did do lights up in the palms so I'll, I'll show you how I did that. So what I'm doing next is I'm doing circle lights. So this is the number four round brush and I'm using the primary blue first, but I used all the colors. So there's so many different color lights in this. I'm just doing one color at a time here. So this is just the primary blue painting little circles on the strands. But then when I get up into the actual palm tree leaves, I just want to make sure that um, well I'm just painting circles that are overlapping my tree so kind of you can do it on the, the actual tip 
the leaves and stuff, but I did it mostly on the middle line. So it doesn't really matter. You can just kind of paint them all over the place if you want. So these could be lights or they could possibly be ornaments. Um, I ended up painting them um, to make them look like lights in the end. So when you do the Christmas lights, you do the color first and you wait for it to dry and then you do a little pop of white in the middle to, and that'll make it look like they're glowing. But I will definitely be demonstrating that here. So one color at a time and then you rinse your brush off and you go on to the next color and then you rinse your brush off and go on to the next color. So I, I went on to the red This is the primary yellow. And then I did orange lights. And then I did green mixed with kind of yellow and white to kind of make it a different kind of green so it would maybe stand out from the palm tree leaves but I did the green ones mostly on the strands of lights. Next I'm going to go on his sunglasses here and grab the little bit of white on my brush and do some sort of diagonal lines right there on his shades to give that little bit of a glare look on his sunglasses. The next thing I'm going to do is paint the Mele Kaliki Maka, the Kiernins. On the sign, you can do any saying you want. I just love the Melikaliki Baka, um, the Hawaiian Christmas, Merry Christmas. So I'm going to put that on my sign. And this is a different brush. So this is a number zero round brush and titanium white. So I'm just going to paint this in. Um, I'm not the greatest at calligraphy, but it's a beach sign. So our lettering can be messy because that's, it would kind of go with the theme if it was messy. So as long as it's legible, I guess. But you can do this with a paint pen. So if you have a Posca paint pen, definitely would be a great tool for this step. You can draw your letters with chalk first. Probably not chalk, it might be too thick. But if you have like a white um, charcoal pencil, you can draw it in first to make sure you have the spacing right. Um, you can use black maybe. The black may not stand out as much as the white, but you can try it with the black if you have like a black Sharpie or um, pretty much any color paint pen. I would test it out first to kind of see what it looks like against your wood. But I am just doing a Mele Kaliki Maka on the sign. And then on the bottom sign, I'll be putting uh, the Kiernins my last name.
The last thing I'm going to show you is how to make your Christmas lights pop. This is super simple and very effective. It really um, pops the painting, having these lights really glow. So I'm just taking my zero round brush and all I'm doing is painting a little white dot in the middle of each of my lights. And by doing that, it's gonna make it look like your lights are bright and lighting up. Really um, adds to the, um, the effect of the entire painting. This painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion as I paint the last few white dots in the center of all my lights. Then I am going to go ahead and sign my name. I'll be using this same brush, this, this number zero round brush to sign my name, but with black over in the lower left hand corner of the painting. But that's it. I hope that you enjoyed painting the tropical snowman with me. I love tropical themed paintings, so I always enjoy doing these kinds of paintings. But that's it. Thanks for watching.